So we're talking League of Ireland football once again. Uh, delighted to say joining us is uh, Keith Cowan. Keith, always good to see you. Good to talk to you. Cheers, Ashton. Good man. Well, big game for Harps, to say the least, Keith. Uh, away from uh, Finn Park on the road in Dublin. St. Patrick's Athletic is, is the opposition. If they could get three points tomorrow night, it would be massive, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think uh, I think three points. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a it's a must. It's uh, it's a, it's definitely a not lose. You, I don't think you can go there and, and come away from Inchicore with nothing. It's not a place I suppose where Harps have done really well over over the years. I think their last one there's back in twenty seventeen. Um, I think it was two maybe a three one one two goals from Danny Morrissey and a goal from Packy Mealy got three points on that occasion. Um, but look, it's a you know Harps have been there earlier the season and they were beat four one. Uh, yes, the last time the two teams came up against each other was in Balbafe, and it was a brilliant 3 1 1 back in August. Uh, Old Abbey getting three goals, and you know, we thought this was Harps in the ascendancy, and we were going to maybe definitely move away from that uh, relegation playoff. And you know, maybe there was a, even signs of maybe looking towards Europe at that stage. But look, uh, 1 1 in the last seven, and a couple of draws in there as well. Uh, when you think about the last couple of weeks, you had you had a dairy game, you had to draw the game both at home. You would have been hoping maybe that you come come away with you know more than just single points on both of those occasions. But look, in there the fighting chance, you know, I'll well, have the boys geared up. I don't think there's much that they'll, they'll need much motivation for this weekend. And yeah, I think it's just definitely come away, come come away with something, and you know, definitely keep it alive for next week. Yeah. And they need to get a result on it. And I know you disagreed with me about the three points, but they need to get something out of it because you have to flip the pressure back on Waterford, who play Longford on Saturday, don't you, Keith? Yeah, you do. And and like that's by no means an easy game. Yes, you know, Longford are dead and buried and they're relegated, but you know, there's no pressure on them now. And there's an expectancy, there's a pressure on Waterford to just go and win that game. You know, when you're playing against a side in the league that's relegated and nothing to play for, sometimes you know, there's no pressure on them and they can just go and play freely. And, you know, I'm sure they'll be looking towards next season and the manager will be reminding them who wants to be here and who wants to play for Longford next year. So, you know, they'll be looking to prove themselves. A lot of boys will be looking to earn contracts for next year. And, you know, the the pressure very much on Waterford. Uh, Longford have beaten Waterford area this year already. So that will be in the back of their minds too. Uh, they have to go there to do a professional job. They have to get a win. And, you know, that is, I suppose, with them having to go to, uh, or sorry, with them playing Pats next week at home, you know, this will be the one where they'll be wanting to pick up the three points. Yeah. Uh, as How crucial is it you don't concede early? Because we've seen what happened uh, in the last trip to Dublin against against Shamrock Rovers. You don't really want to go one down very early in a game, particularly against a, a Pats side that is that's top quality. So they have, Keith? Definitely not, you know, and that's something that, you know, Harps haven't really been doing over the last couple of weeks. You know, they have been, you know, defensively quite sound. Um, you know, they'll, they'll all go there with a game plan, absolutely, is to, st- to stay in the game and, you know, not concede and, you know, be be right from set pieces. And, you know, you can't go to sleep because this is a game as well. When you think of what Pats have to play for for the rest of the season, they have a cup final in two weeks' time. You know, they're already assured European football. This is the week where they could maybe let their big guns go and, you know, make sure everyone's playing and everyone's firing. And then next week, when you're a week away from a cup final, you might look to rest a couple of key players. So I can see them going full strength. I can't. And and again, they'll be playing for places. There's lads will be want to be, you know, be in the manager's thoughts for the cup final. You know, we we, we know the talent that they have with Benson, Forrester, Coughlin, and, you know, they have a great, you know, a a great side there. So uh, they'll all want to be in the mix uh, for the cup final. So this would be, this would be the one that they'd be looking to test themselves and then put the feet up maybe next weekend. Yeah. Do you expect many changes in the Harp setup, do you? I don't. I think they'll go with pretty much what they went with against Derry. Um, they made changes against Rada. A few, a few surprises in there. Look, we we don't know the full story, but I was, you know, surprised not to see Seymour in the in the middle of the field. I thought he's been excellent, especially second half of the season. You know, a lot of stuff that he's done, you know, has has been of real quality. And you know, as we've seen, his what he brings, his energy, his power from the middle of the field. Um, you know, then he played against Derry, you know, did well against Derry. Ryan Rainey again missed out against Strahada two weeks back and then, you know, was in for the Derry game. Maybe didn't have his best game, but he'll be wanting to put that right again this week. I think he'll go with his tried and trusted. We know uh, that there'll be a couple of suspensions, um, but uh, no, I wouldn't expect too many changes for this game. Yeah. 
Uh, so another uh, big weekend, obviously, coming up. And then the final run of matches uh, next weekend as, as well. Harps know that if they can stay out on, on goal difference, that will be enough. Uh, but uh, what are you predicting then for that game just before we leave the Harps situation, Keith, for, for tomorrow night? Tomorrow night, look, I think look, I'm going to be as optimistic as possible. I think that um, although look, Harps need, Harps need a result, they need a result, and you know you're looking at your big players, you're looking at your captain, you know, you know Webster at the back there, you know you're looking at Siddiqui, who's been brilliant the last couple of games, you know Mark McGinley, who's come back in again, and you know, you know a, a great game against Sligo, man of the match performance, and really steady the last couple of games after that. You're looking for your big players to take control of the game, to organise, to give nothing away, and uh, you know I think I think Harps will have enough. I don't think the game will mean as much to Pats. I think uh, you know there'll be a certain emotional side to it as well that that you know, hopefully harps will take over and you know need you know that they, they will need to get something out of the game hopefully there'll be a vocal uh travel and support there as well so you know i think i, I think harps will do it i don't think it'll be a high scoring game uh i think maybe one nil one nil maybe maybe, maybe two nil okay and you, would you expect waterford then to take all three points against longford at bishop's gate uh, again, again, that's one where the early goal could come into it. You know, if if Waterford get an early goal, you could maybe expect them to steamroll them. You know, the, the quality that they have, they have been scoring other goals. You know, the, in the last few weeks. Um, but if Longford can, you know, keep it nil nil to half time, then theirs are going to creep in. Yes, Waterford have a lot of quality, but they're a young side. Um, you know, bits of experience in through there as well. But uh, yeah, I think the, the the longer that it remains, uh, no, no, not one. It could be it could be a tricky night for for Waterford. But if they get that early goal, like we said, I expect them to go on and win comfortably. Yeah, well, let's move on to Derry City's situation. Um, it's it's nice going into two games remaining that you're still in with a shot of Europe. Yes, they do need a bit of a hand from Pats to win the cup, but Derry's still chasing that fourth spot and very much all to play for with the Derby against Sligo coming up on uh, Friday night, Keith. Yeah, all still up for grabs there. Very exciting time for for Derry. You know that they that they that they have that uh, that they have that European football. You know, and their and their sites. There's there's a couple of teams there in the mix we spoke about earlier about Bowes and and Dundalk. You know, been in that mix as well and not out of it. And you know, we talked about Dundalk. You know, one time's been relegation, uh, or sorry, candidates for that relegation playoff spot. They pulled themselves out of it. Obviously, we we know the quality that they possess, but yeah. Derry very much, um, you know, they'll be looking towards this game this weekend as a real opportunity. You know, we, we spoke about the players already that Ray Higgins is, will be bringing in for next year. European football, you know, I don't think that they need it for next year. Essentially. I think it'll be a real bonus for them this year if, the, if they do get it. Uh, we know uh, that they're in a great position financially um, as well. And, you know, obviously with the players they're going to be bringing in, we know Duffy's going, we know McElhaney's coming next year. There's talk about Georgie Kelly, you know, with his 20 goals already this year for Bowes. Is there a chance that he could end up there? So, yeah, look, a lot of uh, a lot of things uh, in the melting pot for Derry at the moment. And then Higgins, obviously, he's going to be thinking about next year, who there at, at Derry, you know, can I depend on for next year? You know, you, you got a derby game against Sligo. They'll still want to be keeping the pressure on, obviously, to accumulate as many points as possible to try and pick up that fourth spot if Pats go on to win the Cup. So um, he'll be looking very much towards next year, but I'm sure, again, Friday night's massive for them. Yeah, it is. But would it be easier to attract maybe one or two extra players that possibly thought might have been out of your reach if you can secure European football for next year, Keith? If you can get a European game or two? Yeah, I think that can be two sided. Obviously, you know, you know, players love to play in Europe, and you know, it's a it's a great carrot to 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 dangle in front. You know, as well as you know, a big, you know, maybe a four figure sum as well at the end of the week. So it all depends which type of player that you're looking to attract. But then again, the, the big players want to play in Europe. You know, it's another place to sh to showcase their talents, and you know, a great experience for any player to to have. So uh, yeah, I think look, it's something that again, you know, when Murray's talking to these players. You know when he's, you know, if there's a, if if there's a difference of a couple of clubs maybe wanting your signature and you can offer European football, then of course that's that, that that's going to be massive. That's going to be great for any player to go and test themselves on that stage. Yeah, were you looking at European football when you went to Glen Torren? It's not something that it's not something that, <laughs> that I had in the back of my mind. To be quite honest, that was uh, get a game of football and then worry about European football. So. <laughs> No, it's not something that I say that I that I was thinking about, but uh, a great experience nonetheless. Yeah, because not too many players get to, get the chance to do that, Keith. So they don't. 
No, well, again, look, you know, there's there's players that do and there's players that don't. And I suppose in my case, it's not something that I ever thought was on the cards. But like, it's a great experience to, to have and to, you know, something that you always look back on. And uh, yeah, to, to sort of tick that box in your, in your career is, is, is a real, as uh, somebody proud of. And I am. Um, Okay, finally, just back to the bottom of the table and two games to go. And uh, I'll, I'll ask you the same in a couple of weeks. Well, I'll check to see if you're right in a couple of weeks' time. Um, who's going to stay out of the second bottom position and who's who's going to be in it? Who's going to go to the playoffs? Look, sure. You know, when you're talking, when, it, when it's coming out of goal difference, you know, it, it is very hard to call. Like, like those teams are split by seven goals at the minute. You know, Harps and Waterford are, are separated by seven goals. Um the way that the games are panned out, if I was if I was to put it like that, there, if Harps had maybe Longford this week and then Pats next week, then I would say I think Harps are in the better position. The fact that the cup final is closer for Water for, for Pats next week, that's the only that, that's the only thing that I can say. Um, and you know that that's why, unfortunately, I think Waterford maybe on form as well. They're they're in slightly better form. Harps aren't in great form at the minute. You know, we, we look, as we, I mentioned earlier, one, one and seven. You know, yes, a couple of draws in there, but I just feel that Waterford at the minute seemed to be in a better place. Players seem to be in better form. Um, a bit of, bit of momentum uh, with them. I just feel that they might that, that they might scrape out, and unfortunately, Harps might be in that relegation playoff. But again, look, you know, I wouldn't worry about Harps in that relegation playoff. I would, ex- you know, I would expect them to win that quite comfortably i don't think either either of the two teams i think it's uh, i think it's bray and ucd yeah. are on the other side of it and i you know i would expect harps to 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 beat both of the, either of those over two legs so uh, even even if it is a case where they do find themselves there i don't think that um i, I don't think they'll have any trouble okay we'll wait to see what happens keith Cohn, as always thanks for joining us cheers cheers Ashley.